Now we will start the chapter application of Newton's law. So first we'll see a typical pulley system and then we'll discuss how can we apply the Newton's law in a pulley system. So this is our typical pulley system. You can see a pulley here. This is your pulley around which a string is attached. This is string and uh, on the both ends of the string there are some masses attached. This is mass M1 sorry mass M2 and this is mass M1. So this is our typical pulley system. Now let's go through various assumptions and uh, facts about the pulley system. The thread used in the pulley system is ideal thread that is it is massless, it is inextensible and it is flexible. Also the ideal pulley system is frictionless system. Now the same thread bears the same tension. So for example here we have a pulley system which has one thread. Now the tension in this thread will be equal to T and uh, the same tension will be there throughout this thread. So tension here will be T and so is the tension here. So as, as you can see that the value of the tension remains the same throughout the thread. Now in any part of the thread the tension is applied at both the ends and towards the center of that part. So if you take if you take any part of the thread, suppose we take this part. So this is the part of thread that we have taken. So the tension will be applied at both the ends. So a tension will be applied at this end as well as at this end and the direction of tension will be such that it is directed towards the center of this part. So a tension T will be applied at the end A and the tension T will be applied at end B. As we have, al we have already seen that the same tension runs through the entire thread. So the value of tension will be same and this tension force will be towards the center of this thread. The thread tension acts on the object with which the end of that part is connected. So in this pulley system we have two objects M1 and M2 which is connected uh, with the thread. So the tension T will act on both the object. Now the thread is inextensible so the total thread length remains constant. Also the thread cannot bear negative tension that is thrust while the rod can bear tension as well as thrust. Now let's see a solve example. Now we need to find the acceleration of the center of mass in the given pulley system. So first let's see the pulley system. So here we uh, as you can see that uh, there are two masses attached with this pulley system one is M1 and uh, other one is M2. So all the forces that is which are acting on these two masses are shown here. So if we take uh, the mass M1 a tension force T will be acting upwards and uh, its weight M1G will be acting downwards. Similarly on mass M2 the tension force T will be acting upwards and uh, its weight M2G will be acting downwards. So let's assume that the pulley is moving downwards in uh, anti-clockwise direction that is mass M1 is moving down 
and the mass m2 is moving up so if we write the equation of forces for mass m1 since it is uh, moving downwards we can write that m1g minus t this is the net downward force acting on the mass m1 so this must be equal to m1 into a that is mass time acceleration similarly net upwards force acting on uh, mass m2 is uh, t minus m2g and uh, this will be equal to m2 into a so by solving these two equation that is equation 1 and equation 2 we can get the value of acceleration and uh, tension t now we need to find out the acceleration of center of mass so we already have the value of a and uh, t now the if we take this both m1 and m2 as a system the net force acting on the system is tension 2t and the weight that is m1 plus m2g so the acceleration of the center of mass will be m1 plus m2g minus 2t is equal to m1 plus m2 a where a is nothing but acceleration of center of mass that is ac so from here we can get ac is equal to g minus 2t by m1 plus m2 now we already have the value of t so from this we can get the value of acceleration of center of mass <coughs> 